The Pokagon Band of the Potawatomi Indians is a federally recognized tribe with a long history on the lands of Southwest Michigan and Northern Indiana. The Grand Kankakee Marsh Area of Northwestern Indiana was once the largest inland wetland in the United States. The Natural Resources Conservation Service has partnered with the Pokagon Band to restore 1147 acres of this area to functioning wetland. This site was enrolled under the Wetland Reserve Easement Program in 2002. Well, the Polkagan Band had villages in and around the South Bend area. The Kankakee River uh, Marsh was an area that our ancestors used to help sustain themselves. It was for fishing, gathering, and, and hunting. Since we've lost some land in the past, trying to regain as much culture as possible, you know, for our future generations, restoring an area that our ancestors used was, you know, just a good link to our past. Our band, named after Chief Leopoldo Pokagan, was largely centered into Wajak, Michigan, from here. Of course, we had villages that extended down far, far south here, uh, down here to the Kankakee River Basin. And uh, because of that relationship in our presence historically, we ended up purchasing land down here in North Liberty. Prior to being drained, the Grand Kankakee Marsh was close to a million acres of wetlands. Nine months out of the year, you would have had one to four feet of water, uh, three to five miles on either side of the river. You would just have thousands of marshes, ponds, wet prairies, probably the most biodiverse area in North America. Any federally funded construction project requires a compliance review. And that's where, the, in this case, the archeologists would look over the area in question, see if there are any known uh, cultural sites within the area, and then do our best to avoid them or mitigate any kind of damage to those sites. The biggest thing is the tribe is a sovereign nation. So you're really a liaison between the United States federal government and the, the tribal government. Um, so a lot of it is being a liaison, um, handling the differences in timing, um, making sure that we're being respectful of what the tribe needs as well as meeting the deadlines that NRCS has set for the various programs. Our goals were to create a place for our tribal citizens to come and hunt, fish, and gather, just uh, similar to what our ancestors did. In addition to that, it also created a living laboratory for our youngsters that are coming up to learn about how our ancestors not only used this portion of our territory, but it was enabling them to learn about ecosystems. The tribe had a vision for this property. Uh, this had been the winter hunting grounds of their ancestors, and uh, they wanted to restore it as close as possible to what their ancestors had. Uh, so the tribe had access to field notes that were from the 1800s, so we could tell exactly where the oak savannas were, where the sedge meadows were, where natural wetlands were. So we utilized those to help us set the conservation plan. And then, of course, we had to look at our engineering to see what was actually feasible, keeping the neighbor's drainage all intact and, and not impeding on them. Prior to the restoration on this site, it was crop ground. It had previously been irrigated with a center pivot system and some of that, some of those remnants were still in place. The soils for this site are what we call muck soils. Muck soils are basically uh, decomposed, highly organic matter. And if you try to stack them up above water, they basically degrade. And so that is a real difficulty for the site and trying to figure out what kind of structures could be placed to hold back water. 
I like to uh, compare the muck soils to chocolate pudding, and so we had to come up with a little bit of a unique design to deal with those soils. The sheet pile structure that I designed for the site is basically driven sheets of steel that are pushed down into the ditch bank and, or, and placed across the ditch in order to create that designed elevation to hold the water back. And so that was a unique design for this site um, to push down into that chocolate pudding to, to stay in place. The County Drainage Board in each county in Indiana oversees regulated drains in that county. And for this site, there were several legal drains bisecting the site. For these, we needed to work with the County Drainage Board. We were able to relocate one of the legal drains so that we could put open water on a larger portion of the area. The benefits to our surrounding neighbors and farmers that are downstream is that what once would have drained off of our property is now held back and that decreases the intensity and, and likelihood of flooding of downstream properties. After working through several reasonable design options, we were able to come up with something that Mark could take back to the Tribal Council and that we could all agree on as a design. We worked very closely uh, with a handful of individuals, but then um, the actual decision making would go to the Tribal Council. Um, so the DNR um, from the tribe would go to the Tribal Council and, and get their approval on what was happening out here. So we were able to do a number of, of different practices, getting as much water as possible out here. So we have the ditch plugs, we have uh, weir structures, macro topography work, but we have a lot of different diverse habitats, which was really the goal to get to get a lot of diverse habitat out here. So we have monarch habitat, we have warm season grasses, there are some native uh, woodlots that are, that are here. Um, we actually have areas that have flooded out and the trees have died, and now we have seen osprey and bald eagles nesting and roosting in those trees. So it, it's been a great project. NRCS has been focused on monarch habitat restoration, and we were excited that this was one of the sites we were able to restore some monarch habitat. We planted 80 acres here in the winter of 2018 as a dormant seeding. Milkweed is very important to monarchs because it is the only plant that they will actually lay eggs on. With the monarchs' migration, they have a large migration period that lasts over several generations. They really need that milkweed in order to reproduce and, and move the generations forward. So the, the continuous blooming throughout the season of all of those flowers and sources are great for the monarchs and other pollinators that can use those sources. So that was a, an important um, restoration that we did recently for this site. Working with the Pokagon tribe was an enjoyable educational experience for me and to have that partnership and to see how they think of the land and treat the land was a really good experience for me. One of the biggest rewards to this project was our cooperation with the Pokagon band, the Potawatomi. The tragic history of the Potawatomi within Indiana and being forced out of Indiana uh, into private lands in Michigan and the movement back in the South Bend and a restoration of part of the native environment that they wished to reestablish in this area. The Pokagon Band were expelled from this area around South Bend and being in some way an assistance to bring them back into this area and helping them in the restoration of a native environment was very uh, rewarding. Watching it develop over time and, and seeing what was on paper with all the planning that went into it and now looking at everything that's, that's happened, it has come back, it has, it's, it's beat my expectations. Wetlands are a critical part of our natural environment. They provide habitat for animals and plants and many contain a wide diversity of life. 
They also create ponding areas for flood control and filter sediments. They bring people together for common goals and shared benefits. The Pokagon Band of the Potawatomi tribal members use this site for hunting, bird watching, native plantings, and education to youth about nature and their history on these lands. The NRCS Wetland Reserve Easement Program pays private landowners for easement rights to restore and protect wetlands. The Wetland Reserve Easement Program is a continuous sign-up, competitive program. Contact your local NRCS office for more information.